Anthony, many congratulations. A comeback victory. You're up to fourth. City ground absolutely rocking at the end there. Something yeah. special happening at yeah. Forest this year? We've been playing good football. Um, and that's all credit to the manager and, uh, and the rest of the staff and all the players buying into what the manager wants us to play and how he wants us to set up in the games. Um, but like I say, the season is still very, very long. But we've got to take it game by game and just enjoy enjoy the journey, really. How much relief was in that goal for you? I mean, yeah. you won't thank me for reminding you. First goal since February. Honestly, don't don't remind me. Um, I'm a, I'm my own biggest critic. You know what I mean? So, and I'm not I'm not scored in a while. And honestly, I I owe myself a big apology as well as, as well as the team. Even though the team played really well, I feel like I could contribute more. Um, and I know I'm a good finisher, and it's about getting in the right area so I can finish with both feet. Um, but now we've just got to keep going and just credit to the team for, for playing so well today and I think we thoroughly deserve that victory today. Yeah, tell us about the game because it was interesting. <coughs> it was very cagey for the first Honestly. hour and then when you came on it, it opened up. Um, yeah, um, so obviously Villa, we thought it can set up as a four but obviously they set up as a, as a five, I'd say. Um, and I think they, they had a good spells in the first half and we, we wanted to change some, things, some things in the in the second half and I think we did that. Um, obviously to come on and make a difference is what you want to do. You want to, you always want to play. I, I always want to play every game. Um, but it's credit to those that are starting. They've done a fantastic job. Um, but now we just got to keep going from now. Yeah, just finally, I know you're taking it game by game. I know that's Nuno's message, but you can't blame the fans for getting excited when they see the league table. No, of course. Um, just enjoy the journey, really. Um, last year was very difficult for us. We had point deductions. We, we was playing well, but we weren't really clinical. And I think that's probably one thing that's changed this season. We're more clinical in front of goal. Um, and yeah, long may it continue. Well played tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. There is something special bubbling there, isn't there? But it's interesting that he says in that interview he apologises for not doing more, not con contributing more. I guess this is the sort of moment that could maybe help him to kick on and be that player that can contribute more in the coming games. I really like his openness and his honesty. Mm -hmm. Very rarely see that. He's obviously disappointed with what he's produced recently, although he is a real talent. He's had some good games still. He's quick. He has got, as he said, he can finish with both feet, can play both sides. Um, and the more competition they've got for places and the more of their quality players playing well, the better for them. But the key is not to get carried away. You know, they are sitting in a wonderful position and they are playing good football and getting good results. But you can soon, if you get a bit above your station in this league, you can soon be brought down a peg or two, can't you? So uh, I don't think they will. No. They've got a lot of hard grafters in that team as well as the talent. Yeah, they certainly do. Well, seeing as we've just heard from him, let's have a look at his goal. He scored it late on, but as the reporter reminded him, it's his first since February and he ended a 30-goal, 30 30-game 30 goal drought here. I think he's got a lot to say thankful to Anderson there for winning yeah. it back because initially they had the ball and they were a bit sloppy here, Callum hudson Adoy trying to play the ball in behind. But then it's the attitude to snap back and win it back and it's a great tackle. I'm sure Villa had a few arguments, but it was played on and then Alanga then makes good movement and... Stays inside the width of the goal, which gives you always a chance. And he's sharp, he's quick, and he runs onto it. But it's a great pullback, and um, you know, an ecstatic way to, to end the game. And yeah, fair play to him. I guess there must be no better feeling in football than to score a late winner. I don't think there's a better, I don't think it's a better feeling in life. <laughs> Honestly, life. it's it's incredible. I, well, what can remember of it seems that long ago. <laughs> Honestly, because you work so hard for those moments. You know, there's a lot of games you play, especially forward players, where you work hard and you don't get a goal or you don't win and you've got to wait another week and you might be on the bench. Now, I know you played forward position as well, so it's, yeah. you, 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 you don't get that very often, that wow feeling. It'll be buzzing tonight. And I, think, I expect him now to probably go on a little run of scoring goals. I'm going a bit like off tangent here, but especially now when we're so into phones and digital, to get that feeling and that euphoria that's in stadium, not only for him, not only for the team, but for the fans, mm. that feeling, even the fans, I don't think you can really replicate that, but scoring last minutes is, I have to agree, I don't, I don't think I've ever replicated that, you know, um, it's the best feeling in the world and they'll be on top of the world tonight. For the next match day live, we'll have to dig out some of your late goals now and look through them, look through the archives. Um, Let's talk about Forrest's disallowed goal. This was ruled out for offside in the end. Yeah, it was a wonderful move um, and it deserved a finish. Uh, I mean, started by Morgan Gibbs White, who I said was absolutely terrific. Great turn, good pass out to the left. And they had a good battle, these two, Hudson and Doyen Concer on that left side. And here he is again, look, doesn't admire his pass. Little slot through the lines from Gibbs White and a great, a great little pass and you think they're back in it and probably deservedly so at that point. 
And then the longer, the more you see it in the replay, you start thinking, oh. And then we took about, what, 28 minutes to work out what part of whose body was where. And uh, they got there in the end, and I think in the end it's armpit over, right armpit over Dina's backside, so <laughs> that's where we're at. Beautifully described there. Yeah, I think you saw Chris <laughs> Woods there, like, Chris Woods, sorry, you know, biting his hands, thinking, is it going to come and we're going to get it? But, um, no, obviously the decision came through in the end and um, disallowed, but eventually they still won it anyway. Yeah, well, they they kept pushing, didn't they? Yeah. And Milenkovic scored. He's now scored in back-to-back matches. He's a big part of that defence, isn't he? Well, he's a, he's a big lad as well. And uh, the great thing about this goal is the resilience. Another, there he is again, my man Gibbs. What a ball. Brilliant header. You could have been, you could have been forgiven for feeling sorry for yourself after that last one didn't go in. And I don't think that's a goalkeeping error. We did think that at first, kind, didn't we? But... It actually hits him on the chest. There's not much he can do, but what a great ball. It's begging to be headed. I think as well, that type of ball when it stood up, especially with Milenkovic and Chris Wood, you know you've got aerial presence there. So mm. if you hang anything up mm. and you've got, if they've got momentum and they're running onto it, there's no defender or goalkeeper can do anything about that. Mm. So it was a really, you have to pick the right type of lofted pass for the right personnel and he did that and it was a great, you know, great cross. Nottingham Forest are now four points off the total amount of points they accrued for the whole of last season. <laughs> it was their eighth win of the season, only nine in the entire of last season. Obviously, things are, have been turned around with largely the same group of players as well. So Nuno deserves a lot of credit. What can be achieved, do you think? I know you said we don't have, we can't get ahead of ourselves, but I'm going to. They're fourth from the table. Is Europe a possibility? Well, I can only compare it to the year when we were at Fulham and we got into Europe by finishing seventh. Um, and we never really believed that we could until nearer the end. And, and you've just got to keep enjoying it and keep believing. There's a lot of good teams in the Premier League at the moment, and they're aware of that. But they've got a real work ethic and discipline about them with a sprinkling of real quality in certain areas. And you never know. You never know. A European place would be a remarkable achievement for Nottingham Forest, I think. It, it would. It would be unbelievable. But there's. I don't mean Champions League, by the way. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I Conference don't... League or. Yeah. yeah, I don't think. Where they are now, top four is where they'll end up. But like you said, if they could get into that mix to play some form of European football, it would be massive for the club. And then maybe aspirations after that. But obviously, that's what the owner wants as well. So um, they're in a great position, but you've got to stay in the mix. There's some dips and troughs that all the teams have been through the, for the Premier League this season. And maybe they'll have another little dip, but you've got to be able to bounce back and hang in the fight towards the end. There was an incredible moment in the game with Emi Martinez <laughs> making a fantastic save. Some would say that this is one of the best saves of the season, potentially. Where does it rank for you? Well, I think it's a brilliant save, reflex save, and one of the best we've seen this season as a reflex save. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so close to him to actually instinctively get down there and be able to keep... We've seen him, he's capable of these amazing match-changing saves. Um, he'll be devastated in the dressing room that... You know, he hasn't been on the team that's won after making that save for his team, but it is brilliant. Um, just instinct. And to put it into context, that was at nil-nil as well, so it was a really important moment. And then after that, then they obviously went and, and took the lead, Villa, so he was probably thinking, I've saved us one end and we've gone the other end. But no, he's, he's a top keeper. As much as me being a Birmingham fan, I, I do actually really <laughs> like him. And he, you know, he keeps... No, you out, don't. Digs him out of trouble. <laughs> no, I do like him. He digs she him does. out of trouble every night. No, he is Marmite. He's, he's brilliant, though, and he that is save brilliant. is... Um, it's really unorthodox as well. So to dig it out like he did, he, he deserves a lot of credit. But um, why yeah, is he well, marmite? It's that good. We've got to see it again. Yeah? I think he's marmite to people because he's a pan pantomime villain, isn't he? For the opposing fans, you know, we've seen a lot of things he's done: winds people up, gets in people's heads, saves penalties against everyone. A lot of people don't like him, but if whether you like him or not, you you, you can't hide the fact that he's an absolutely phenomenal goalkeeper. You'd love him in your team, though. You'd yeah. hate to play against him absolutely. because he would do your head in. But in terms of things like that, that's why you want to be him, him be in your team. So two minutes 54 after that save, let's have a look at the goal. Talk us through this one, Danny. Well, it's, um, it's a brilliant header from Duran and, and a good move. Um, I mean, instinctive little ball in from McGinn there. The pace is already on the ball. This is, this is the, the same move, but earlier. And Morgan Rogers, he does unbelievable in the game. I think he's their best player. He takes the ball in really difficult areas, carries on with the ball, you know, a little give and go with Duran and carries on. He was the, he was the catalyst for their good moves um, and deserves some credit because 
even for this goal, without him, they wouldn't have scored it. But the finish is absolutely brilliant. And at that point, you think there's only one winner. Mm. Unbelievable. I mean, it's John Duran's fifth start in all competitions and he scored in all five of them. He is having an incredible season and he's such a game changer for Aston Villa. I mean, sometimes, you know, a lot of the clubs are thinking we'd want one striker. Villa have got two and <laughs> there's his stats this season, which is, you know, considering he doesn't start all the games, but he's, he's pretty spectacular and it is better than... Um, Ollie Watkins in that graphic, isn't it? So it, it's great to have them both. But obviously, he started tonight and uh, he came up with the trumps. He did. So he obviously now, based on this, would he deserve to keep his place and continue to start games? Or does the manager have to keep switching it to maintain that competition between the two? I they're think pushing each other, clearly. I th- yeah, they do. And I think he'll, he'll probably keep switching it because they are different. Mm. And depending on the opposition you play and depends what he wants. And he's not scared of making those decisions. Mm. Uh, the thing is, you can't have a successful season relying on one person. No. You can't. And you need both to have game time, don't you? Because you learn a lot and you develop a lot in-game as opposed to just on the training field. Yeah, of course you do. And also, also you, you need, with the amount of games they're playing in Europe, domestically, you, you can't have the same players playing all the time. You just the, the lethargy will kick in, the tiredness. Look, two great strikers competing week in, week out is great for Villa. Yeah. And they're both scoring. What more do you want? What more do we want? Well, let's well, ask... Well, maybe a win. But... <laughs> well, shall we ask the manager? Yeah. Let's uh, hear from Unai Emery. Unai, I imagine that was pretty tough for you to take at the City Ground tonight. Good evening. We played 90 minutes more or less in the idea we, we planned. And uh, the first 70 minutes, we were controlling. We were more or less uh, keeping ball possession. Don't, con- don't consider that lot of them to, to try to, to attack us, to, to get uh, our box and with corner with fold, because they are uh, very aggressive in attack when they need usually to, to try to go to, to the match. And uh, we scored one goal, it was more or less, uh, was under our control the match, but the last uh, 20 minutes we lost completely the control we had. Why? Because, of course, when they started pushing more, they started doing some changes. We needed as well to keep being consistent with the ball and trying to, to be even. They were more aggressive and pushing higher. We have, we have, we have to, to keep all possession and try to avoid them and then opening spaces maybe to attack and, and to try to score the second goal. But, of course, uh, it's a process. We are in a process and... Uh, Today we can analyze 70 minutes, another 20 minutes, and of course, where we, we have to try to, to continue in, uh, building the team is, is clear for me. You say that, and it was a really tight match between you two, but some decisions didn't go your way. The biggest one of all being the, uh, the penalty decision, Morgan Rogers um, at nil nil. Do you feel that there was enough in there for you to be awarded a penalty? I can't refuse to uh, tell something about the, the referee or the, the penalty. Uh, it's, it's the game how we played and, and how we can uh, continue in doing our, our, our process. And tough match because now they are a rival of us. They are a rival, they are with 25 points like us, because they are playing very well. And more or less, uh, we were speaking about today, the match was uh, more or less one very good test as well how we were responding away at one, at one team, they are feeling comfortable and strong. Of course, the tactical idea, the plan was as well, when allies and, and the player, they, they, they had the, the 90 minutes how we want to play clear. But of course, then, the opponent as well, they have players, they have individual skills, they have as well their moment, and they won at there because they deserve the, the last 20 minutes to, to come back the result. OK, you talk about it being a process and what you're trying to build and it was going to be a difficult night, as you thought. John Duran, he's proving very difficult for you to, to leave him out with another goal. Um, to put you ahead, actually, in the match. Yes, I prefer to change <laughs> with that goal of John Duran and to win. But, of course, it's good for him and for the team. But uh, we, you have to try to, to be defensively stronger, to be defensively stronger, starting with our positioning with the ball and uh, then, of course, try to... To, to add the individual skill and, and, and performance to, to get goals like, like him. 
Was it a setback as well to lose Tyrone Mings before the match? It was down to illness we were hearing. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? He was uh, feeling not very good. This morning, more or less, he was better, but uh, just before the, the match, he was feeling again very sick, and we decided to change him. Unai, thank you for your thank time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Unai. Yeah, Tyron Mings was a late admission, wasn't he? He was due to start today, but of course, as you just had felt ill in the warm-up. We're just looking at the details of after Europe, and they've had no win in five after playing in Europe. I guess that was always going to be expected, was it, Danny? Because it's a lot for the squad to, to deal with. Well, if it was expected, it should be planned for, if you think that's going to happen. I, yeah, Yes, in terms of their naivety in the competition. Not naivety, but they haven't been in it for a long time. And playing elite games midweek and weekends, difficult. Um, that's why I talked earlier about maybe more rotation more often. Uh, I think his squad's good enough to rotate more, but he's obviously learning as he goes and seeing which players he can trust. Yeah, and he is a specialist in Europe, so I'm sure he, that he will be able to manage this team and navigate them through the season. City at home, Newcastle away, some big games to come for this side. Yeah, but talking about Europe, they don't play into the back end of January now, so they can Gives focus on that. And even if they're not going to rotate, he can have hopefully players that are more fresher. And it's a difficult uh, combination to play Europe and Premier League, so now he can focus on that and try and get them back where he wants them to be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess it's now... The focus really will be on Forest and the fact that they are in the top four. And Aston Villa, well, they gave a good fight, didn't they? But it wasn't meant to be for them. My thanks to both of you for your company. You've been wonderful as always. Thank you for yours as well. And don't forget, more Match Day Live action tomorrow with a bumper day of fixtures, including the derby. Where do you think Nottingham Forest and Aston Villa will end up in the Premier League table? Let's talk about Nottingham Forest Football Club. Nottingham Forest Football Club has had an intriguing journey in the 2024-25 Premier League season so far. Their recent success and high position has been marked by a mix of resilience, flashes of brilliance, and challenges that is contrary to their usual fights at the other end of the table. Under the stewardship of manager Nuno Espito Santo, Forest has shown signs of maturity and tactical evolution. The team's performances have been characterised by their tenacity in defence and an ability to capitalise on counter-attacking opportunities. Key players such as Morgan Gibbs-White, Taiwo Awanii and Antonia Alanga have been instrumental in driving Forrest's performances this season. Hudson Odoi and Gibbs-White's creativity and leadership in the attacking third, Awanii and Chris Wood's clinical finishing and Ellinger's composure in midfield have provided a strong foundation for the team. Forrest began the season with a mix of results, including impressive wins against higher-ranked teams like Liverpool and Manchester United, and hard-fought draws that showcased their ability to grind out points. However, they have also struggled with consistency, particularly in away matches where defensive lapses have cost them valuable points. Injuries to key players during critical fixtures have further complicated their campaign, testing the squad's depth and resilience. Looking ahead, the expectations for Nottingham Forest are more optimistic than in the last seasons. With the January transfer window approaching, fans are hopeful for reinforcements that could address weaknesses in their backline and add creativity to their attack. Continued development of young talents and improved squad cohesion will also be crucial as the season progresses. The club's faithful supporters remain optimistic, rallying behind their team as they navigate the challenges of a demanding season. Should Forrest continue to build on their strengths and address their vulnerabilities, they have the potential to not only secure safety but also aim for a respectable top-half finish, solidifying their place among England's elite clubs. Supercomputer Opta predicts an 11th finish for Nottingham Forest. Given their form, we believe they can remain in the top half, perhaps even up to 7th position. Share your thoughts below. Now let's talk about Aston Villa Football Club. Aston Villa Football Club has enjoyed a commendable journey in the 2024-25 Premier League season so far. Under the guidance of manager Unai Emery, the team has continued to build on their strong performances from the previous campaign, solidifying their position as a formidable force in the league. Villa's tactical discipline and attacking prowess have been key features of their play this season. Emery's well-structured approach has allowed the team to balance defensive stability with fluidity in attack. Key players like Ollie Watkins, John McGinn, and Emiliano Martinez have been pivotal to Villa's success. 
Watkins and John Duran's consistent goal-scoring form, Telemann's dominance in midfield, and Martinez's reliability between the posts have provided the team with a solid spine. Additionally, the emergence of young talents such as Jacob Ramsey has added an exciting dimension to their gameplay. The season is a mixed bag with notable victories against lower-ranked teams, showcasing Villa's quality. However, occasional lapses in concentration during fixtures against the top sides have highlighted areas for improvement as the team aims to achieve greater consistency. Looking ahead, expectations for Aston Villa are high. With ambitions of qualifying for European competitions, the team will need to maintain their momentum and address minor weaknesses. The upcoming January transfer window could provide an opportunity to further strengthen the squad, particularly in areas where depth is lacking. Villa's passionate fanbase remains firmly behind their team, confident in Emery's leadership and the squad's potential. If they continue to perform at their current level, Aston Villa could not only secure European football but also challenge for a top-four finish again in the Premier League this season, although with the resurgence of Liverpool and Chelsea, it will be very hard. Supercomputer Opta predicts Aston Villa to finish fifth in the league. We believe the same is likely. Do you think they will make top four again? Share your opinions here.